Kilo straight for 40. Black don't crack, but Puerto Ricans do sell that to teenagers. You're like Aladdin if he cleaned carpets. <laughs> I really love Hispanic, Latin families. You guys always come up to support. Um, it's so nice to see so many of you guys. I haven't seen you since earlier today when I bought Gatorade off you on Fuller Tank. Mike Knight, I'm gonna say the most offensive thing I can say to a black man in America. I am not threatened by you in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Bob and Mario are here tonight. Um, you know how there's always like that, uh, the one hot person in a couple? I'm so glad they don't have to deal with that. <laughs> Brandon Keener looks like the kind of guy that swipes right on a family photo album. Um, <laughs> some people like to drink Tito's and soda on ice. I prefer to have a soda and call ice on Tito. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. You guys ready to have a good fucking time tonight? How many people are here to see Tito? We are so happy to honor him and roast his sorry ass tonight. The host of the Roast of Tito, Roast Battle Chicago's very own Chris Green Holy shit, everybody. This is a lot of Puerto Ricans. How the fuck you feeling, huh? There we go. That was as quiet as I've ever heard a Puerto Rican. That was pretty great. Guys, this is amazing. Uh, can we? Can you make some noise for Tito in the back? Give him your love. We're here honoring him. This is going to be great. I'm your host and I'm Chris. It's good to see you. Okay, so a little awkward up top. Some world events went down today. <laughs> a little Ako Taco situation um, to translate. Um, but so for some people might not have heard, so let's just get it out of the way. Richard Simmons died, and it's sad. It is sad, and I know I just wanted to bring. Also, I'm obviously the record heat wave coming. So <laughs> listen, ex ex President Trump, Trump, he got he got shot at. And I didn't know really whether, yeah, here's the thing. I didn't know, I didn't know whether to make a pro or, or anti joke about that because Puerto Ricans, in my experience, 50 50 on this guy. So, <laughs> all I'm going to say is that I'm grateful that you're here. Tito's grateful that you're here. We're celebrating that psychopath tonight. And we're going to have fun no matter what's going on in the news. And I appreciate it. With that being said, are you guys ready to bring up your fucking, your, the people on the show, the Amazing Dais? You ready? Yeah! yeah. Now, give it up for the Amazing. Bob Keen, get it up here, Bob. <laughs> give it up for Ms. Brown on the panel. Give it up for Ms. Brown. Ariel Julie. <laughs> Joe Kilgallen. <laughs> Chris Martinez. <laughs> Mike Knight. <laughs> And guys, the man of the hour, the fingerless gloves wearing man himself, the delicious, the Puerto Rican, the Tito! That was uncomfortable for me. <laughs> that was a lot. All right, there's one other person that, you know, uh, we got Kevin Kellum. He's going to be on the show, too, but he's in the back because there was one person that wanted to be here tonight but couldn't, but she sends her regards instead, and I'd like to start off the show with a little message from one of Tito's best friends, Jessica Mrs. Oh, oh, yes. Listen, all right, you want to roast, you want to roast, you want me to fucking, you want me to do your little fucking birthday roast? Fine, let's do your birthday roast. So I know that Roast Battle's probably going to put together some of their favorite memories of Tito's roasts. So. Probably play a couple clips, make it look good. Here's some of my favorite memories. This is Jessica Misitano. Hello. <laughs> That's not the name she used to go by, actually. Uh, Jess used to go by Ronald McDonald. You know, she goes by, she's a woman now. Fuck you. <laughs> God 
damn it. God damn it. Look at this oh. soft ass Dothraki. <laughs> Mansplain astrology. <laughs> you, you look like the weekend fucked his cleaning lady. <laughs> you, look, you look like Rumpel Stiltskin fucked Beetlejuice. <laughs> look at this lampless genie. <laughs> you look like they were rubbing out of you or fatherless kids. <laughs> Just really puts the whore in whore door. <laughs> you put the whore in horchata. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. The punches just kept coming out. Huh? I wouldn't beat myself up too much over it. Uh, you had some good accomplishments yourself. Like, um, remember you did kill Tony? You, you killed it on there. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hey, remember Theodore? I was with you that night. You're all embarrassed. Remember? <laughs> yeah, the little book, the little water gun. <laughs> anyway, here's another one. Talk <laughs> my dick later, bro. Fuck out of here. Oh! <laughs> Too. I was there in the front row watching you get eliminated. Just look at that uh, photo shoot that you had for yourself. Oh, you painted your face like a what do you call them? sugar skulls, sugar sugar skulls. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what in the midlife crisis is that? Why couldn't you just lease out a Porsche like everybody else? Like I couldn't tell if you were dressed up as that little kid from Coco, if you were just cosplaying as your father. You know, because he's dead. Just want to say happy birthday. I miss you. The rest of y'all, not so much. <laughs> oh, dude, hey, it's Chris. Hey, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not the same without my best friend, so. Happy birthday, you little bean picker. Give some sound to everybody. Give an house warm. That's amazing. Now that that's up, Kevin, get your old ass out here. Let's introduce the other guy that fucking makes this happen, Kevin Callum. Give it up for him. Let's start this row. Sit down, stupid. <laughs> Let's do this. Kevin Kellum, what a beautiful... In a shocking turn of events, Kevin's actually unmarried. Can you believe it? <laughs> Kevin's unmarried, uh, and he loves pro wrestling. For Kevin, WWE stands for Women Won't Endure Me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, this is... Take a look at this fucking guy. Yes, no, this is not the roadie of a Metallica cover band. <laughs> this is a stand-up comic. Or at least he was 10 years ago, which was the last time he wrote a new joke. But <laughs> Kevin talks a lot about Catholic guilt in his act. Uh, the Catholic comes from how he was raised, and the guilt comes every time his family asks him, Hey, how's that comedy thing going? <laughs> It's not well. <laughs> you do not need to be Catholic to feel guilty about Kevin. But, um... <laughs> Kevin should be selling Heritage Not Hate bumper stickers right now. <laughs> but no, he's here. He's here with us with a bald head and a wrestling t-shirt collection looking like a Make-A-Wish kid that made it. Oh. Now, <laughs> guys, it's gonna get real dark, so light the fuck up. <laughs> light up. All right, it'll be good. Uh, Kevin, oh, and by the way, Kevin, I say this on behalf of everybody all the time, please shut the fuck up. You're so loud. But <laughs> speaking of Irish wash-ups, Joe Kilgallen is here. Give it up for Joe. Yes. Joe looks like he kills a gallon of Guinness before he beats his wife. <laughs> I'm kidding. Joe wouldn't do that. He has a beautiful wife and kids. I assume. I don't know. But that would be the only reason to not kill yourself if your career was going in the place that his is. But <laughs> Joe has a podcast about drinking in the Chicago Cubs. It's called uh, No One Will Talk to Me at Bars Anymore. Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I love you, but you're 40, and you're married with children. You're, you're 43. 
Fanny Lips Open, and you have a sports podcast that nobody listens to, if you don't get your shit together right now, your career is going to go exactly the way it's been going forever. But, I'm kidding. Speaking of cautionary tales of Chicago comedy, Bob Keaton and Ariel Julia are here. Give it up to them. An amazing couple. The only thing higher than Bob's blood pressure are Ariel's eyebrows. That's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel's so Jewish that her eyebrows are permanently shaped like she's surprised to see the price of everything at all times. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Ariel looks like if Snow White was also one of the seven dwarfs. <laughs> I'm joking, Ariel. You know I'm a fan. I love your fat ass. <laughs> and his name is Bob King. <laughs> Bob and Ariel are quite the couple, but I gotta be honest, I have no idea how you could kiss someone with that much facial hair, Bob. <laughs> Bob Keen proposed to Ariel right here at the Lincoln Lodge. That's the end of the joke. Pretty <laughs> nice. Say what you will about Bob, but the truth is he's got a thick four-footer between his legs. And she has some interesting views on Israel Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to Jess Martinez. Jess Martinez is here. Give it up for her. Yes! Hell yeah. Jess and Tito, the dynamic Duolingo. Amazing. <laughs> Before I get too far here, some housekeeping. Uh, speaking of which, Jess, it's nice you got the night off. But... <laughs> Hey. That was pretty good. <laughs> Jess is so, like, unknown to everybody in the Chicago scene, she sent a list of facts for, like, us to use. <laughs> like, we had to do so. I'm just gonna read it verbatim, if that's okay. <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> Bisexual, pansexual. From the suburbs. Chronically single. Can read a room, but not always great at picking up social cues. It's called autism, Jess. <laughs> Oh, Making it fancy. That's amazing. Yeah, Tito picked one Mexican for his roast, and she has the personality of all the girls that are teenagers and that he dates exclusively. Uh, I'm just kidding. Jess, I'm happy to have you on the show about Mi Casa Su Casa. And Ariel, Mi Gaza Zu Gaza. But... Oh. Pretty good. Jess, if you're here, who's waking people up at the Sheridan, not understanding, no thank you, please come back later. Okay. She's not the only... Okay, let's see who else is there. Okay. Okay, she's not the only one ignoring people asking to not be disturbed. Thank God Keeper didn't wear his headband tonight. <laughs> Give it up for Brandon Keeper. He's here. Give it up for Brandon. <laughs> Brandon took a break from DMing the Hawk Tua girl to be here, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Hawk Tua is actually Ariel's Hebrew name. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Keeper's a bad boy comic. He likes to live like a rock star. Uh, whenever he books a gig out of town, he wrecks the hotel room. Uh, but that's just so he can feel like he's at home. Uh, fucking white trash. Brandon's a locksmith. That's true. He is a locksmith. It's funny, this is a show dedicated to a Puerto Rican, but Brandon's the only one that can actually break into a sedan here. <laughs> Brandon's a real working man. Uh, he, he hasn't uh, had a job in months, but his liver is working as hard as it possibly can. <laughs> I'm kidding. Brandon's sober now, which is good. Give it up for Brandon's sobriety. Give it up for Brandon. He had to make a change. He decided to uh, make a change after a night of drinking where he called a uh, guy the N-word. Ooh, yeah. When Brandon found out the next day that guy was actually Mexican, Brandon was like, damn, I have such a better slur for that. I gotta stop, <laughs> I gotta stop drinking. Speaking of black guys, kind of, Mike Knight is here. Get it Mike Knight. Look at his light-skinned muskrat up here. This is adorable. He's a great comic, but an even better host. You can see him everywhere. The Olive Garden, Chili's, <laughs> the Red Room Comedy Club, everywhere comedy shouldn't be. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm... He's a great guy, even better relationship. You know his girlfriend actually immigrated from Bulgaria and runs the Dent Theater now? How incredible Woo! is that? Give it up for him. Yes. 
That's amazing. And you know she's doing an incredible, an incredible job, too, because uh, Mike has never been booked at the Dead Theater. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it. I mean, look at him. He's got to be partially white given how much he wants to fuck immigrants, but. <laughs> Speaking of questionable races, Miss Brown is here. Give it up for Miss Brown. Yeah! No, or I like to call him Seaman and Garfunkel. That's not. Yeah. Ms. Brown, Matt Brown, Matt Brown is full. Yeah, uh, Matt, Matt looks like every controversial new athlete in women's sports. <laughs> uh, I asked Matt uh, where he works and he said Blue Mercury. Yeah, who's Mercury? <laughs> the guy last week too drunk to not know you had a cock? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Brandon's sober now, but Ms. Brown, it's awesome you made it on the lineup. I know that you're super busy reading to all those children in elementary schools, but <laughs> Matt Brown is his real name, but he goes by Miss Brown because his dad misses his son. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Matt, you look like if Brute Paul swallowed Richard Simmons' cum during a full moon. Rest of <laughs> Pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I'm gonna be honest. This is gonna be kind of uncomfortable. Matt actually tried hitting on me earlier, which is uncomfortable. I'm gonna be honest. I wouldn't fuck you with the dick that you threw in the dumpster. Okay? That's the Joe's comedy career. And Jess's autism diagnosis. Where Brandon gets his furniture. One block down from the Lincoln Lodge. Where Ari and Bob got married. <laughs> During a show. <laughs> that Mike and I won't get booked on. Oh, okay. Wait, oh shit, I forgot about Kevin. What am I, his parents? What? <laughs> He was ready to start the puppet show. Yeah. This is gonna be fucking fun. Guys, I wanna get your energy up right now. Start clapping. Woo! For the first day of Sandalus of the evening, the amazing Doc G! <laughs> you can try, but I can't afford the divorce lawyer. All right? <laughs> Guys, give it up for your host, Chris Greco. <laughs> you little suave Italian Ben Shapiro. <laughs> I don't get it. Chris, you're, so, you're handsome, you're funny, you dress well. Why are you still that unlikable? <laughs> you're basically Tony Hinchcliffe with no fight famous friends. <laughs> <laughs> Jess Martinez is here. Jess. As you heard, Jess Martinez is pansexual, and I get it. If I look like you, I keep my options open. Relax. That's why I'm a little nervous when you're this white at a podium today. I've. <laughs> Jess Martinez, her parents knew she was a little different uh, because uh, at her quinceanera, uh, she ate all the pussy that fell out of the piñata. <laughs> I am a little starstruck, though. I never thought I'd actually get to meet the lady that killed Selena. <laughs> the, difference, the difference being is that Selena has, uh, that the lady killed Selena has killed. Uh, <laughs> Mike Knight, Mike Knight, you skinny, underfilled cigar of a man. <laughs> I'm glad you could take the night off of uh, selling loose cigarettes on the green line to be here. <laughs> you know you see Mike Knight, you hear him before you see him, because you just hear, loud, loud, loud. <laughs> <laughs> I deleted the really racist stuff. 
Speaking of really racist stuff, give it up for the hard R of Chicago comedy, Brandon Kiefer. <laughs> Brandon's what happens when you take a caveman to a Jimmy Buffett concert. <laughs> Kiefer, you're like, you're like a Dennis the Menace. <laughs> Sorry, I, he lisps too, or as I call it, a racial slur. <laughs> Kiefer, Kiefer's like a Dennis the Menace made pipe bombs and meth. <laughs> Look, everyone, despite how Kiefer's face looks, I promise you he's only been divorced once. <laughs> He looks pretty beat up, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Speaking of beat up, what up, Ms. Brown? Uh, you're the only person I know who transitioned from a dude to a Republican grandmother's couch. <laughs> if you dressed up any gayer, you could be the Pope. In the name of the Padre. No, no, it's a, it's a verga de padre. There you go. <laughs> your face, Miss Brown, your face is why they invented glory holes. You know that? <laughs> Matt, uh, uh, Miss Brown uh, also sings opera. Uh, so, uh, yeah, blowing dudes is only the second gayest thing you do with your throat. <laughs> hey, but uh, enough about Drake with AIDS. Uh, oh, yeah. Welcome to a roast, dickheads. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Callum is here. Kevin Callum. Q101 personality, Kevin Callum. <laughs> Radio is his dream job because when you, this is a true story, when you uh, uh, glue your eyelid shut when you're a kid, yeah, introducing a Red Hot Chili Pepper song is as high as you can go. <laughs> He lo no, like Kevin, Kevin loves three things. He loves wrestling, rock radio, and his own voice. <laughs> Do you like anything that doesn't dry up pussies? <laughs> Just one. Hey, Bob, yeah. As a radio professional, it sounds like you got a little dead air up there, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Between your ears, you have a little dead up there, dead air up there, but. No, the, the only people who know who you are are people who can't afford Bluetooth in their car. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, you didn't go bald. Your hair got tired of hearing you and it left. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you better not talk shit about me, Kevin. I've seen how you live. You'd be a hoarder if you could afford the garbage. <laughs> Ke Kevin's mother doesn't believe in him. <laughs> Which is weird, because she's Catholic. They'll believe anything. <laughs> Except for a crying kid with a bleeding asshole. Oh. <laughs> hey, man. That's crazy. Hey, man. Speaking of traumatized Catholic boys, Joe Kilgallen is here. Joe's just here because he thinks Mike Knight stole his lucky charms. Joe, Joe's Irish has two kids and a wife and a really bad temper. You are one bad softball game away from being Chris Benoit. <laughs> Joe, Joe looks like if Ted Bundy fucked a bottle of Jameson. <laughs> Joe, all right, I'm gonna lift this because this is kind of technical here. Uh, Joe's family is Irish. And family, and they're they're uh, they're ancestral county of Limerick. Uh, and in honor of your ancestral county, I wrote you a limerick. Are we ready? Uh, a comic with red hair named Joe had a family to feed with his shows. The jokes weren't hitting the bed he was shitting. <laughs> so he desperately asked, Who do I blow? <laughs> they say gravity is the soul of wind. I really should have thought about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll get your turn. <laughs> What you hear every time you get laid. Uh, <laughs> I do feel bad for Joe. He's put out like three or four really good comedy albums that have gone up the iTunes charts and he's still on a show with me. <laughs> <laughs> How's as good a time as any? Ariel. 
<laughs> my wife. Ariel is my wife, so I get the Palestinians. <laughs> Just like a Palestinian, I too have an angry Jew that can't let shit go ruining my life. <laughs> She bombed me instead of making me kill myself. Jesus. <laughs> we did get married in a traditional Jewish ceremony. I even learned how to speak their language. Angry Yelp reviews. <laughs> one star. There is not one star in this room. <laughs> she can't decide whether to just go full-blown midget. Uh, <laughs> That's a wank, <laughs> Like, uh, <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, what's she got going on? <laughs> Oh, I'm much more. No, you know what? Oh, never mind. <laughs> standards. Uh, Where? Where? Uh, Where? Are you all still short? She tried selling feet pics, but it wouldn't sell because her face was in it. <laughs> Damn. Damn. You know she got low. Hey, somebody's got to pay the rent, Bob, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you work in radio. Do not talk to me about paying rent. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ariel, Ariel, uh, she keeps the bush hairy because she's that Jewish. Uh, her bush, uh, Ariel's bush is so Jewish, he gave Moses the Ten Commandments. <laughs> All right, if you're not a theologian, laugh, fake laugh at the next part. <laughs> Ariel, Ariel has an IUD. Uh, an Israeli uterine disaster. <laughs> wow. Like, her pussy is like the Western Wall in Jerusalem. In ruins and wailed on. Uh, that's your wife, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only difference is, that, is with her pussy, you have to pray afterwards. <laughs> I should have gone into a Puerto Rican room looking for this much literacy. All right. <laughs> and that brings us to the birthday of <laughs> the I can't believe I'm stuck roasting a gay werewolf. That's, yeah. Hey, Bob, just do the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get when you're you friends with a Puerto Rican Rick James. Uh, look, Matt, 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 I need you to look at Tito. If you hit the, you can beat Tito if you hit the gym and act even gayer. Hey, you get one more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm a little overdressed here. Tito told me to dress up tonight, mm -hmm. so I decided to dress up like a blues brother, mm. and he decided to dress up like a brown step uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Tito, you got big, like, like gay bullfighter energy? You know, just like, okay! Ariel, did you approve of that? Did you fucking workshop that one? Ariel. Who gave him a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Do you know, you're the kind of guy that women date right before they give up and start stripping? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm he gonna... actually has a bit. No, no, you don't talk here. Uh, he actually has a bit where he describes the kind of women that are into him as spooky bitches. <laughs> yeah, we just call them dudes. <laughs> uh, they used to be dudes. <laughs> Dino, you're 40, and you still don't have kids. You're Latino. You should have abandoned like four of those by now. <laughs> you're right. I did give you a special present for tonight, though, for your 40th birthday. I did, uh, I've been meaning to give you these for a while. Fingers for those fucking gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. I'm Keen, everybody. Wasn't that uncomfortable? <laughs> we did a roast of Bob Keen a year ago, uh, and he, he he bombed his own roast. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for your next comic? Uh, yeah. Let's wow. keep this going, man. I want to hear from Miss Brown right now. <laughs> Uh, Tito, we're for, you're 40 years old and we're all here because of you. I feel like it's like every woman you ever paid for an abortion for, all in one room. I'm so fucking, I feel pretty, honestly. <laughs> well, we've got a day of people that I've known here for a long time, and I mean, how can I start with anybody other than Bob Keen? I mean, Bob Keen, the world's oldest busboy. <laughs> you look like you were given up for adoption by John Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> it's really rough. Like, Bob, has anyone ever told you that you're a lot like Maggie Gyllenhaal? Your older brother is so much hotter than you. Uh, <laughs> but I will say that I am very proud of you for getting married. I really am, because the only thing that I thought that was going to last forever in Bob Keen's life was the sex offender registry. So this, is, <laughs> this has been a really sweet moment. And then we've got his lovely wife, Ariel, who I love to death. Ariel Judy. Yes. She's named after a Disney princess that had to come up from the bottom of the ocean and pretend to be a retard, retard to find a husband. <laughs> well. <laughs> Every time I see Ariel, the only thing I can think of is, a nice Jewish girl had her wedding reception here. That's it. That's it. That's the whole thing. And her parents are alive? It really, it, it took me, it took me, it took me. But I am really proud of you guys for being, for, you know, getting from being engaged to being married because when y'all were engaged, it felt like I was watching the first lesbian wedding happen because everyone's like, yeah, no, Ariel's gonna marry, mm-hmm, love is love. <laughs> And then, then we've got lovely Brandon Kiefer over there. What's that product in your hair? Discharge? Uh, uh, dishonorable. You look like a barbax dish rag. <laughs> This is rough. I love you to death, Brandon. I've known you since I was 18 years old. I've known Brandon for almost a decade. And I gotta say, I only met his ex-wife twice and I still like her more. <laughs> <laughs> rough one. It's a rough one. And then, okay, and speaking of other rejects, Kevin Callum. My, my dear, sweet husband when I run out of every other option. I, I cannot wait for me to finally turn into the porn you're ready to click on. I am. <laughs> Because with Kevin, I think I would be a great move up for you because I don't know how to say this, but Kevin, you look like you say, I didn't know she was 14. A lot. <laughs> a lot. God. <laughs> You're so desperate for sex, you would stick your dick in a pile of leaves and then say thank you to the tree. It's a, it's a sad life. It's a sad fucking life. And then, then we've got other friends here like the lovely Jess Martinez and a matching red lip. We love to see it. You brought the glamour over here. God, I remember the first time I saw you do stand-up and I thought to myself, Jess is going to make a great stand-up comedian. Like, I think you're gonna give birth to one. Your daughter should be funny, because it's fucking over for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, oh, fuck, we are cooked. Um, <laughs> speaking of being cooked, I gotta admit, Jessica, you're, you're a woman ahead of your time, and I'm gonna give you credit for that, because most Mexican women wait until they're 50 to look like a can of frijoles for free toast. <laughs> 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 Damn. Damn. La latte grande. <laughs> then, then we've got the lovely, the amazing, the terribly handsome Joe Kilgallen. This is a nice looking guy, folks. Can we put some music? <laughs> when I look at that married man, you know what goes through my mind? What a good reason to take antibiotics. <laughs> Good time, a good time. But um, Joe, if you don't know, if you're not a stand-up in here, you're not in the scene, Joe is one of the top dogs of Chicago comedy. 
Woof, woof. And <laughs> he's one of the top dogs of Chicago comedy. And because I've seen him all the time for like the past 10 years, he's got this one joke that I'll never forget because it's 20 minutes long and it's his entire act and he's been doing it for a decade. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted. We get it. Your son pissed on you once. Move on. Isn't the youngest in fucking college by now? Shit. Go to the Hope Navy, buy a new shirt, and move the fuck on. I'm exhausted. I get so fucking tired hearing straight people complain about those IVF babies I buy for thousands of dollars. It's really, it's a lot of work. I sell them to lesbians. It's a flip. It's a flip. It's a flip. Uh, I like the ones you have to spell. Uh, and then, then I get down to the reason why we're all here. Tito. Roberto, Alberto, Roberto, okay. You see, in Spanish, you sound like you have a job because in English, we know. <laughs> but um, it is your birthday. This is basically your birthday party. You have family in the building, Tito? That's my mom, my sister. Oh, your mom? That's so sweet. Oh my God, since your family's here, do they know that you keep the fingerless gloves on during sex? <laughs> Did mom teach you that one? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Damn. Um, <laughs> oh my god, you look like you got kicked out of concerts. You applied to work security at. <laughs> it's a really tough life, I can see. I can see. God, I mean, you kind of look like the like you'd run a biker gang, but like a biker gang full of third graders. Like, you're the baddest bitch in the middle school. Like, that's the vibe. That's the vibe. But I gotta admit, like, I have had a crush on Tito for the past five years. There's just, there's just something about a guy who's so dirty, I know he could give a cum rag a yeast infection. <laughs> Just makes me mouth. Just makes me mouth. But um, before I get out of here, I gotta be honest, you know, like, I'm so happy that you asked me to do this because a lot of people wouldn't know with our friendship that we have way more in common than you'll think. Because Tito is a 40 year old Mexican man with no kids, so we both love anal. There are <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Chris Brown, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, man. When he said anal, this whole section started crying. Then, they are looking uncomfortable. Are you guys feeling okay? You know this was a church, right? They brought flowers. They thought it was church. But you guys ready for your next comic, huh? More energy, motherfuckers. You ready for your next comic? She's hilarious, we love her dearly, give it up for the amazing Ariel Trulli! A, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about my marriage. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. They're all single, that's so funny. <laughs> No, give it up for Chris, my favorite fallout goy. <laughs> that goatee, he talks so fast, like a Robert Downsy Jr. <laughs> Doesn't he look like he would suck dick for a Pepsi? Doesn't he? <laughs> and in that blazer, he looks like he would sell you bad insurance, right? <laughs> like he really puts the hard R in. Grego as a Geico. <laughs> I fucked that up. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Give it up for Kevin Callow. Kevin's here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Kevin, if you're here, who are people listening to Spotify instead of? <laughs> 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 oh, it's, but Kevin, he has got this like beautiful childlike wonder. A lot of people call it Peter Pan syndrome. Now tell us where you've been hiding all those lost boys. <laughs> where are they? Where are they? <laughs> Doesn't Kevin look like he lives in a storage unit? <laughs> <laughs> or works at a bowling alley <laughs> as one of the balls? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's not that mean. All right. 
Mike Knight is here. Give it up for Mike Knight. Yes. You're like if a blunt wished it could be a real boy, but it has Q-tip energy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mike, if you're here, who's applying to coach junior high girls track and field? For <laughs> <laughs> reasons. <laughs> Alright, um, actually Mike has really big balls, <laughs> eight balls in his pocket, <laughs> see him after the show. Uh, Jess Martinez is here, give it up for Jess, yes. isn't she brave? <laughs> <laughs> But actually, I think we're wearing the same lipstick tonight. Is is yours also called a uh, dumb bitch in a crop top? <laughs> <laughs> we're both wearing the same. Thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> Joe Kilgallen is here. Give over, Joe. Does he look like a concentration camp counselor? Familiar. <laughs> 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 Crazy. Does he look like he, he's the coach of like a rival baseball team in the 80s? <laughs> and I'm gonna lose, you know? <laughs> but Joe, Joe looks like a misogynist, but he's not. He's not. He believes in a woman's right to make any kind of pie she wants. <laughs> Uh, Bob Keen is here. Here we go. He's here because I drove him. In the car that I bought him. driving Bob everywhere. He always makes my car smell unemployed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I, know, I know it looks like Bob stormed the Capitol, but he couldn't afford the flight. <laughs> 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 Uh, Bob's like if a gas station hot dog could drive drunk. <laughs> Bob's like if a Facebook argument could have a DUI. <laughs> Bob is actually like a huge alcoholic. <laughs> refers to all paper money as drink tickets. Oh. <laughs> so, so excited when he got this job. He finally is making 16 drink tickets an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so he loves to drink, just so his liver can also do blackface. <laughs> Matt Brown is here. Give it up for Matt Brown. So I'm actually a huge fan of Ms. Brown's comedy. And so uh, to pay homage to your style of comedy, I'm going to do some jokes in, in the Ms. Brown style of comedy. Are you ready? Yes. All right. All right. Ms. Brown is so gay, she thinks popsicles are for practice. <laughs> Ms. Brown is so gay, she thinks ranch dressing is a pair of assless chaps. <laughs> Ms. Brown is so gay, she thinks hearing aids means getting fucked in the ear without a condom. <laughs> Uh, Brady Keeper's here. Give over Brady Keeper. <laughs> hey, Brandon, who's more divorced, you or your front teeth? <laughs> 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 Honestly, so the last time we did this, we did this for my husband's 40th birthday, Rose, and I'm not gonna lie. 
Brandon kind of handed my ass to me, and it's it's too bad that God didn't hand you one. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm serious. We did a nude show together. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I've been told that I have an ass that won't quit. Kiefer's no call, no show. <laughs> <laughs> Ansley's chat. <laughs> so that brings me to whoever all here give it up for Tito. <laughs> Tito, dressed like a hairy lava lamp. Uh, <laughs> you can make horchata with soy milk. I <laughs> You look like you dress like the Salvador Dalai Lama. <laughs> That's an art joke. <laughs> You're like Aladdin if he cleaned carpets. <laughs> Actually, a magic carpet ride is what Tito calls it when he accidentally spills his coke on the rug. <laughs> I can show you the blah. <laughs> <laughs> He's so whitewashed, though, he calls it Cinco de Manny's. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I do love Tito, and we, we do text a lot. And because he's Mexican and Puerto Rican, he uses a J for an H when he texts. So when he's laughing, it says, like, ja, ja, ja. <laughs> and he also uses a J for the H in the word whore, as in, you're a pedophile puppy. <laughs> Mario and Julia, everybody, one more time. Mario, that was so funny. This guy even laughed one time, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry, that'd be funny. Left the shirt. You guys ready to keep going? Huh? Give it up for one of the OGs in Chicago comedy. We love them dearly. Give it up for the amazing Joe Kill Gala! Thank you. Uh, man, I'll, I'll just be honest. I don't have roast jokes for everyone. Um, I was very busy uh, being a working comedian. I'm going to keep her, but yeah, anyhow. Um, I will say this, Chris, give up your host, Chris. Holy shit. Um, I finally know what his last name is from this show. So that's okay. Chris is very, very funny. You should try stand-up comedy. <laughs> Um, Chris did call me a cautionary tale, uh, which hey, maybe that's true, you know. Um, is it a cautionary tale like working with Matt Bamwert? No, is that? Ooh. You can just pipe right in checks for that guy. Um, that's really just for the comedian, definitely. All right. uh, Bob Keen is here. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Has there ever been a situation where someone's like, hey, this is fun. You know what will make it more fun? Bob Keen. <laughs> no one has ever said that ever. Uh, his lovely wife, Ariel Julie, is here too. Ariel's twins. Um, I honestly don't have a joke for Ariel. Uh, she's married to Bob. No joke could be meaner than that. <laughs> and I'm going to call her Ariel for now on. Uh, she's a Zionist pig. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she can't swim, so I'll be weird. Um, all right, Mike Knight is here. Fucking Mike Knight. Oh yeah. It's okay, Kiefer. He's one of the good ones. It's okay, man. I know how weird you are. Right now, I'll be that close. It's okay. Hey, I don't know if you noticed it, but Kiefer's been checking wallets. So the wallets are wallets and wallets are there. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm worried about Kiefer's mental health, though, uh, right now. You know, he's, you know, mourning Trump and surrounded by the most brown people he's ever been surrounded by. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he has a reason to uh, hate you people. He calls you people, not me. <laughs> His ex wife is an immigrant, like you all. So, uh, <laughs> I'm in the crowd now. That's just fucking mean. Uh, 
Yeah, he was married to uh, a German woman who said he's too racist, which goes to show you. <laughs> 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 racist is cheaper, my God. Uh, Mrs. Br Mrs. Brown, Miss Brown, Mrs. Brown. I don't know if you know this, this is breaking news, everyone. Miss Brown has a girlfriend. Whoa. That's true. I heard the news. One of your good friends spilled the beans before the show. Miss Brown has a girlfriend, and I just can't help but think she probably has a way bigger dick. I, yeah. feel, like, <laughs> you know what I, mean? I feel like every gay community will stand pounds because he has a small dick. You know, you gotta yeah. fucking project that to everyone else. We all have to hear your fucking trauma. <laughs> Learn to use your tongue, dude. Learn to use your tongue. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a joke for Kevin Kellum. I don't, because I fucking love Kellum. Um, whenever I feel like shit, I look at his picture and thank God I don't look that way. You know, like, just, like, it makes me feel so fucking happy. Yeah. That, you know, I don't look like a, a huge bald piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that laugh. Why that laugh? <laughs> oh, hi, Jess Martinez, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tito, happy birthday, dude. Thank you. Happy birthday. Uh, Tito and I went to the same high school. Hell yeah. High Brown. school together. St. Pat's on Belmont. And uh, Tito's older than me. He is. He was a senior when I was a junior. Uh, so I'm not in my 40s, Chris. Uh, <laughs> still in my 30s. Uh, Tito is a fucking, he's just a great dude. You know what I mean? He's incredibly close with his mom, which I've always respected. And like a good Mexican boy, he shaves her back twice a week. Tito <laughs> 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 uh, would uh, host these legendary parties in high school. That's what he was known for. He was known for being an entrepreneur, a thief. He was also known for... <laughs> He would host these parties in which he would DJ his own party. Yeah. Yes. Um, which is why him and Kevin Callum are such fucking nerds together. <laughs> we both had these dreams of yesteryear. Um, he was throwing these great parties, which just, I always thought the parties were just an excuse to fuck high school girls, so oh not much God. has changed. <laughs> um, so some things don't change, you know what I mean? Um, by the way, I put as much effort into this as Keeper does his hygiene. So. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, Tito, I got, did, we, we went to high school together, and he was such a great guy. I don't know if you guys know this, but Tito was a star swimmer. Yeah. He was. He was yeah. records. He had records at St. Pat's. Yeah. Roberto Jordan Sit. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was the name back then, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was, uh, you know, big swimmer since birth. You know, his parents chucked him into the Rio. And he was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Every time Tito reminds me, I'm half Puerto Rican, and I go, same shit. I don't fucking care. <laughs> 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 I, I do love you, man. I'm gonna say this though too. It's just like it's so great that you guys. I really love Hispanic Latin families. You guys always come out to support. Um, it's so nice to see so many of you guys. I haven't seen you since earlier today when I bought a Gatorade off you on Fuller Tank. <laughs> <laughs> Thank He's just such a great guy. I mean, he was, he was nice enough to give all these open micers stage time for his 40th birthday. He's just a really good dude. So well, let's, let's say happy birthday to Tito one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Drum Kill Gallon, everybody! I'm sorry, we only have the budget for one real comic, so that's where it is. <laughs> you guys ready for your next fucking Hell comic? Yeah! Yeah! Oh. We've been busting the balls all night because he deserves it. Give it up for the amazing Kevin Callum, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alright, uh, let's give it up for uh, Tito, not affording full gloves as always. Appreciate <laughs> that. That you nine binary chupacabra. <laughs> Look at you wearing sunglasses at 10.30 at night on a Saturday <laughs> indoors. Yeah. Fucking Doritos, fucking Jack Sparrow, Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, I'll get back to you. Chris Greco, you Italian piece of shit. Oh my God. You gabagool goth boy. You insane cannoli posse juggaloni. You Marilyn Manson Mussolini looking motherfucker. <laughs> 
Oh my god, you unibrow bomber. You can fucking sweep the floor with those goddamn things above your people baggy fucking eyes. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. He's Italian. He's Italian. He's so fucking Italian. He didn't walk on stage. He slid on grease that his body naturally produced to get here. You're not fucking Chicago Italian, by the way. You are Olive Garden in a mall parking lot. <laughs> He's the one person who doesn't have to Google map where a fucking Sabaros is, all right? Your connection to Italian culture is quoting the movie Goodfellas. Oh, Jesus Christ. Get him. Yeah. You fucking Italian dirtbag. I bet you put oregano in your fucking Monster Energy drink, you shit. <laughs> You're gonna make fun of me for being fucking old. You're the one who's teaching Korean teenage boys how to say racial slurs over Xbox Live right now. <laughs> they learned you gotta things. lean into the R, all right? All right, Tico, you gotta lean into the R. All right, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my God. Damn, dude, that was so good before you did that. <laughs> Chris's girlfriend recently moved in with him. Uh, she's gonna form a support group with another unfortunate woman who's taking on a burden, Ariel Julie, tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, Bob's liver was black, but leave it to the Jewish comedian to steal some real estate. <laughs> 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 We have a real Puerto Rican crowd here, but if you're worried about the next hurricane, she has the fucking gun that started it, apparently. <laughs> oh my god. But no, she's a good woman. She's a good woman. Give it up for Ariel and Bob getting married. With her. Uh, she's been doing a lot of charity work in the lead up to the wedding. She marries homeless people, apparently. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, Bob Keen is here currently. He is here. Uh, he is keeping his teeth in his mouth for 30 fucking seconds. Uh, Bob loses fights with drunks. He loses fights with people on Facebook. He recently lost a fight with air in front of this building. <laughs> yeah, he's really made a mark on the Lincoln Lodge by bleeding all over it like a fucking idiot. <laughs> Yeah, Bob's done something right. I'm, no, no, I'm sorry. Ariel has done anything you've ever done right. She has done that for you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you wear a tax right off of a fucking person. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why she loves him. That's why she loves him. You know what I mean? That's why she loves him. He is a dependent in a lot of ways, all right? Yeah, he doesn't keep the lights on or the dick up, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I want to give up for the hot version of Bob Keen, Joe Kilgallen, right here. <laughs> right, Joe, thank you for dressing like you just came from the softball game where you yelled at your children. Uh, <laughs> you're raising those kids right, they're gonna have a fucking kidney stone by the time they're 15. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, Joe is the guy who stares at all of you when you're pissing at the trough at Wrigley Field. <laughs> and then just zips up and just yells, Go Cox. <laughs> there we go, Miss Brown was there. Um, <laughs> feeling pretty good. Brandon Kiefer is with us. Brandon took a river raft, apparently, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brandon, uh, we, we, we had a real Brandon in. He was excited. He didn't know his favorite present apparently was bulletproof today. So let's... Uh, Brandon, you look like a used meth dealer. All right. There we go. I wrote that down today. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm having a good time here. Um, I want to also thank Miss Brown for being with us. Freddie, no Mercury. You biracial Liberace, you don't tickle the ivories, you just touch young, white, open micers who don't ask for it. Jesus. Oh my god. Come back in the room, I'll tell you what a real three minutes says. Like, yeah. Listen, we get it, you're gay, all right? We get it. <laughs> Develop a fucking personality, you know what I mean? Wipe the cum off your fucking mouth and get an X, all right? It's all jizz, no riz with you, all right? <laughs> Uh, no. Honestly, Miss Brown, I really just think you fuck men to break up marriages. You know what I mean? Correct. So, so Ariel, so Ariel, lock down your boy. Lock down your boy. 
There we go. There we go. I know what I'm saying. I know what Jess Martinez. Uh, God, you are annoying. Uh, oh, excuse me. They are annoying. <laughs> Mike Knight is with us. Give it up for Mike Knight, is everybody? Mike Knight, I'm going to say the most offensive thing I can say to a black man in America. I am not threatened by you in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Dangerous, physical intimidation, alpha male, pays his bills on time, things never associated with Mike Knight. <laughs> oh my god, I'm having a good time. You guys are with us? You guys are with us? Oh, I'm having such a good fucking time. Now let's get to the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, Mr. Tito. How are you doing, Tito? You good? Billy you good? Did you Billy just drop the baggie yet? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Tito is a landlord. He's also a leasing agent. You double dipping motherfucker. <laughs> you are a pimp that pimps out pimps. Jesus Christ. You call your bottom bitches the people that rent the garden unit. <laughs> leasing ain't easy, but I keep it sleazy. <laughs> How do I know you're gonna show up to someone who rents an apartment from you and just show up with a tool belt and a thong on saying, is your man not home and do you need something now? <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'll, I'll redo that. You're gonna show up to an apartment that you rent to people with a tool belt and a thong on, and then you're gonna say, wait, oh, is your is your wife not home? Do you need to nail something? <laughs> oh. Uh, no, but in all honesty, I do uh, wanna be uh, sweet and say how thankful I am to all of Tito's family who traveled a long, long way to be here tonight. Uh, I am so thankful for you. I am sorry that he is dead weight. I'm very, very sorry. I know he is a burden, but he's a sweet, sweet boy who plays who plays weird world music. It sounds like cocaine is happening all the time in our place. Uh, yeah, I'm fucking a lot. But I, I, I honestly am endeared to him. He's a really, really sweet man. He's one of the best people in my life. And, I, and I've been able to get through the pandemic and work and live because of him and uh, just meeting a good guy who's a good person. Give it up for Tito. Thank you. Oh, my God. Keep it going for Kevin Pelham. Oh, my God. What? Kevin, that was the funniest I've ever seen you be. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my god, there are girls that like that. That's the first time you've ever gotten that reaction. What? That's amazing. Okay, we're gonna keep this fucking going. You guys still with us? That last set was so good, he got three smiles from Vote for Pedro over here. That's a pretty... <laughs> I love you. Keep clapping right now. Start clapping. Let's do it. Let's do it right now for Shirley F. Step Temple herself, Jess Martinez! jokes for me tonight. You guys are growing. You guys are growing. Good for you guys. <laughs> for you guys. Very proud. Very proud. Uh, Kevin is here tonight. He was just up here. <laughs> that was Kevin. Uh, he's a nice guy. Everyone thinks he's a nice guy. Um, such a nice guy. I uh, I drove him to and from a show in, uh, in Rockford. Uh, two hours round trip, about an hour and a half together at the show, and he still calls me Janice. <laughs> and listen, in his defense, he does come from a Blue Lives Matter home, okay? And historically, they don't see people of color, so, <laughs> as humans. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Brown is here. Uh, he's a classically trained singer, beautiful voice, I'm sure. Although it's really hard to tell, considering he sounds like one and or both of Marge Simpson's sisters. <laughs> Bob and Ariel are here tonight. That's, no, that's right. <laughs> yeah, no, they were recently married. Congratulations to them. Sure. <laughs> that's just a formality. Um, you know how there's always like that, uh, the one hot person in a couple? I'm so glad they don't have to deal with that. <laughs> oh, 
same time, though. Super chill life. <laughs> yeah. If you couldn't tell by Ariel's face, she really fell on a grenade for the rest of us ladies. Meow. <laughs> 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 Ariel, you're not a lot of people's favorite person in the scene, but we do thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Pilgallen's here. Woo! He's from Chicago, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Kiefer's here. Woo! He's recently divorced. That's it. <laughs> Just breaking news. Just emotional, personal news. Oh, um, man. I have to be honest, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here tonight. Um, which I'm sure all the other comics are also thinking. Um, but I just I haven't really hung out with Tito much uh, since before the pandemic. Um, I met Tito about six years ago when I started doing stand-up. He was one of the only Mexicans in the scene at the time. But it was nice to have something in common with someone. Although it felt like everywhere we went, people thought we were dating. Um, just Kevin. Kevin thought we were dating. <laughs> <laughs> we were pretty close. I remember one time I was nice enough, uh, thoughtful enough, generous enough to invite him to a boat party that I got a plus one to. Um, but Tito is so cheap that he made me turn on my Lyft app so that he could charge me for the ride from my place to the dock. <laughs> Time is money, bitch. <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> and listen, I'm I'm not gonna lie, Tito was hot. Um, <laughs> in fact, I had a friend once come up to me and she was like, listen, I know you're really close to friends with Tito, I don't want to make this weird, but he's like really hot. And I'm like, I know. And then she had a conversation with him. <laughs> and she was like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my friends often ask me why I never dated Tito. They're like, he's fun, he's funny. He was decent looking. Um, but Tito is more like a brother to me. Um, or like one of those cousins that your parents were actually cool if you didn't get too close with, because you kind of got too close with a different cousin. <laughs> Tito looks like the lowest ranking member of the cartel if the cartel only smuggled cam girls and avocados. <laughs> <laughs> Tito's dad is dead. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which explains a lot about Tito. Um, however, it doesn't explain why his hair is always such a mess. Uh, I feel like you could just Google that. It's called the curly girl method. Look it up. <laughs> um, on that note, Kiefer, is your dad also dead? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why? Tito will send you a link to uh, get your hair together. <laughs> Listen, Tito's got a good heart. Generally, I feel like his head is in the right place. You know, when it's not inside of a 20-year-old with devastating mental health issues. <laughs> We agreed we talk about that. <laughs> all in all, I feel like Tito is a good friend um, that I do prefer to keep at a distance in case I ever have to walk by a high school. There's <laughs> uh, <laughs> Martinez, everybody. Give it all for her. Oh my God. She was so mean. See, you mentioned that nobody made fat jokes, and I agree. Nobody has made enough. So here we go. Oh, Jess, it's, so, it's time to stop eating all those chicho runs and start going on the chicho runs. <laughs> she, she looks like uh, Melissa McCarty helping of tacos. <laughs> Shirley Aztec Temple. I already did that one. Jess looks like she's uh, running the Mexican shopping cartel. <laughs> The local taqueria calls her El Pork Chapo. 
And then she's banging into astrology. Her zodiac sign is Nacho Libra. So, <laughs> yeah! One more time for Jess Martinez, baby. Hey, 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 hey. And keep it going for the amazing Mike Knight! Hell yeah! Oh, hey, hey. Keep it going one more time for your host, Chris Three Collins. Came here dressed tonight like a bootleg FBI agent. <laughs> if FBI stood for fuckboy icon, so. <laughs> he really is the worst kind of Italian, right? <laughs> he often goes to pot bellies so that his girl can finally have an Italian beef in her mouth. I, uh. <laughs> I'd like to thank the dozens of Puerto Ricans that decided to come out tonight and support, and uh, the two, uh, uh, the two, it says here, uh, uh, what are the Corollas, the two Corollas you showed up in? <laughs> I missed way too many beats for that to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so we're here to discuss the undersized hack of a comedian that regularly breaks the stereotypical coolness associated with this uh, culture <laughs> by dating the pastiest white people they can find, <laughs> but gets a pass for the iconic facial hair that we have. And uh, after we get done talking about Ariel Julie, <laughs> we'll also talk about Tito. <laughs> Uh, Ariel, I haven't liked you from the moment I met you. <laughs> this is true. Uh, she treated me like trash, uh, but I think it's because she thought I was Dario. <laughs> and for anybody out there that doesn't know who Dario is, any black guy will do. <laughs> uh, Ariel has uh, fucked more comics in Chicago than a bad minute on Kill Tony. <laughs> Speaking of fucking for a bad minute, she's married to Bob. <laughs> Bob's teeth remind me of the AIDS quilt, you know? <laughs> Looked great in the 80s, but now it's just full of gaps and sadness from all the men that came and left. <laughs> Bob's not good at comedy at all. <laughs> He's never a headliner. Ariel actually performs online through her OnlyFans, and uh, Bob's lucky to even open for her, and she usually just finishes by doing a few minutes of crowd work. <laughs> <laughs> Bob looks like him and Kevin let their beard stay on the side. And not their facial hair, the two women that none of us believe are hiding their raging homosexuality. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about this, this is so clunky. Um, let me see, Kevin. Kevin. Give it up for Kevin tonight, man. Huh? <laughs> Looks like he made a fantastic Paul Bear. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all I had. Uh, Ms. Brown is here. Yeah. The only comic here tonight with impeccable eyeliner and a thousand rushing hours in high school. <laughs> Well, no fact, uh, Ms. Brown actually auditioned to play uh, Jesse Smollett in the Lifetime bio. <laughs> I actually think he'd do a great job on account that uh, he's hired several Nigerian men to just rough him up and tie a rope around his neck. <laughs> it's like he was born to play the role, you know? <laughs> Speaking of born to play the role, Joe Kilgallen is here. Doing his best impression of a poor man's Dennis Leary, says it. <laughs> he looks like he gets his clothes and his hairstyle from UndercoverCops.com. 
as I suspected, most of the comics here tonight are taking it easy on Joe, and that's because he's uh, one of the only comics here with a legitimate uh, profession in comedy. And, uh, I mean, Joe, actually, if you've never checked his IMDb, he has written for the fourth best America's, honey, uh, America's Funniest Home Videos ripoff. <laughs> he was in the second best show dedicated to Chicago police and uh, fire uh, yeah. and rescue. And he's here at Tito's Road <laughs> at the Lincoln Lot. <laughs> what the rest of the comics on the dance don't realize is that this is his rock bottom. <laughs> uh, Jess Martinez is here. <laughs> and if none of you recognize her, that makes all of us. Um, <laughs> But if you think about it, you've seen her in dozens of comedy clubs throughout Chicago. Um, you probably remember, you know, uh, one of her most famous bits. It's when she's asking you if you want the chicken or beef tamales. Brandon Kiefer is the next on my list. Yes, yeah, she really puts the cunt in Confederate. <laughs> As everybody else has mentioned, he's recently divorced from a German lady, but before they did split, they actually, uh, both raging alcoholics, came up with a drink together. Uh, it's called the Grey Goose Step. <laughs> <laughs> but he's trustworthy. If Brandon Kiefer tells you something, he methamphetamines it. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, Brandon Keener looks like the kind of guy that swipes right on family photo albums. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep this as brief as possible because uh, Brandon Kiefer and uh, Bob Keen both have to get out of here because they're waiting on the side tooth fairy. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you combine their mouths, they barely have more teeth than Ms. Brown has T-cells. Um, nice, <laughs> light is in it. Okay, and uh, now, for the man of the hour, Gay Guevara. Uh, <laughs> revolutionary. Uh, <laughs> Tito goes by uh, three names, Tito, Jordan, Sid, but whenever he signs his initials, it's always just HPV. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Tito's both Puerto Rican and Mexican, but somehow he has a machismo of a uh, Bermudan belly dancer. <laughs> Ricardo Pryor is what I like to call him, not just because he's stealing uh, Richard Pryor's act and mannerisms and voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's really, it's because he's just a flaming comic that's running down the street yelling at everybody that he sees. Uh, like, I can't tell that I'm here right now. I know it's because we're friends, but I, I'm still working on my comedy career, and this feels like my new lowest high. You know? <laughs> like, the next song Drake comes out with, you know, and he sees that it's not doing what it used to do. That's where I am right now. <laughs> <sighs> so uh, before I get out of here, I just wanted to say, um, the last uh, Rose Tito was a part of, he got hit in the face by a lemon. And um, <laughs> oh, that's an, he did, he got hit in the face by a fucking lemon. You saw it here tonight, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I saw him later that night, and I asked him if he was uh, gonna be all right, and he told me something changed my life. <laughs> He said this wasn't his first time getting squirted in the eye by a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and it won't be a flag. <laughs> One more time for Tito Jones and Natty Perkins. Oh my God. Mike Knight, everybody. Oh. Oh. What an amazing slam poem that was. <laughs> That was so funny. Some of the times <laughs> somebody put him on the den. If only we had a connection there. <laughs> 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 
Guys, what are we doing? So I clap right So I clap right now. Final clap is before our headliner, everybody, the amazing Brandon King! Yeah, they're moving. That's not nice. All right. Let's start with Miss Browns. Thanks for flying in from Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> and then you gotta wake up and make crop circles in the morning. <laughs> Were you breastfed by a drag queen? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a Southside Pokemon. <laughs> Like I throw a Newport pack out and be like, get a brown. <laughs> <laughs> You're like if Tito was more comfortable with his sexuality. All right. Jeff Martinez is here. Uh, Jess, uh, her job is actually kids fear carrots at birthday parties. <laughs> TV and J-Lo. Um. I like that you shave the side of your head so you can give Tito something to glue on his head. <laughs> Jess has fucked too many losers. I can't believe you're not married to Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Jess is bisexual. Her better girlfriend has to take a Viagra to keep the strap off her. Will it be nice or something? What's going on? Mike's here. We couldn't have got a funnier black guy. <laughs> Literally any black guy would be funnier. The guy at the bus stop is way funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's nose is so big you have to plug it in the winter so homeless people don't sleep in it. <laughs> Mike <laughs> Mike Knight's the kind of black guy at 4 a.m. if uh, if a white girl got on the train she'd be like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Kellum, uh, I call him reverse Harvey Weinstein. Uh, if you fuck that guy, your career will go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin tried to buy a prostitute, but she gave him the money back and said, hey, can we just be friends? <laughs> <laughs> We got our host, Chris, Chris Greenkes here. Oh uh, yeah, he makes all his money by selling all eyes matter cornhole boards. <laughs> He's a mama's boy and a daddy's girl. He's a soft man. <laughs> his favorite sexual position is sitting in a chair <laughs> beside the bed while his girlfriend has sex with a man. <laughs> <laughs> Joko Gallon, yeah. Joko Gallon, so he called me a racist, that's funny. I've never heard the N-word more than when he tried to explain the plot of Black Panther to me. <laughs> he thinks Juneteenth is Obama's birthday. <laughs> I bet you're mean to the migrants. <laughs> Ariel Julie. 
Oh, and Frankenstein over here. <laughs> Oh, no. She's like a little mermaid, except for her, she has legs. I wish she didn't talk, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or let's let her talk, but we'll, we'll put her underwater. How about that? <laughs> that was funny last year, too. I know, I know. No one, uh, no one watched you guys' roast, so I get to read them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I literally Googled Butterface and it took me to Ariel's OnlyFans. <laughs> All right, okay. Sorry, everybody. She said mean things to me, and now it's mean. All right, fine. <laughs> All right. Um, who else we got? We got Bob, the other half. Bob's liver is so uh, fat and black, I can't believe Lizzo didn't hire him as a backup dancer. <laughs> oh, come on. Fuck you guys. I like that one. I like that one. Bob lost his wallet the other night, and I was like, oh, where did Ariel go? <laughs> Bob, the only person that Nickelback gets to make fun of. <laughs> You're so dumb, you probably don't know all the, the fucking lyrics to the Alphabet song. <laughs> all right, I like that one. Whatever. Okay, did I get all you guys? Okay, let's go to Tito, my favorite. Tito, give it up for Tito. I love Tito. Me and Tito have battled many times. We've had some pretty good stuff. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, Tito's half Mexican, Puerto Rican. Half Mexican, half Puerto Rican. Where I'm from, that's called uh, put a little fentanyl in your margarita. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet when he eats ass, he puts salt around the rim. <laughs> Yeah. Every time I see Tito's hair, it reminds me of change my car's oil. <laughs> I guess her hair is too similar. <laughs> yeah. Tito was on the uh, audition for the show 16 and Pregnant. He showed up with a 12-pack of Lime Maritas and goes uh, to the producer, should I provide the 16-year-old or do you? <laughs> <laughs> You look like you're out of a Tim Burton movie. What are you, uh, Tito Retarded Fingers? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> some, people like to, uh, some people like to drink Tito's and soda on ice. I prefer to have a soda and call ice on Tito. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Tito came to this uh, Tito country, he floated on his inflated ego. <laughs> Move, bitch! <laughs> right, I don't like this one. Uh, Tito's so Puerto Rican, he cut himself out of the womb. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So we did have, we had a great battle. We did. You won. We had a great time. And, you know, uh, it's a special night. I'm glad I got to come here. And since we battled, he won. Uh, you know, and since we battled, we both went on to do great things. I went on to perform at the Chicago Theater, and you went on to do this. Uh, <laughs> but this is cool. I'm glad your mom came out. I'm glad you got family out here and everything. The only thing I wish is that uh, I wish your dad could have made it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My name! Oh! oh my god, he's been here every morning. It's my dad. Oh, it's my dad. Oh, look at that. Whoa, oh, Tito's mom's here, and she's so confused and sad right now. <laughs>
<laughs> Show them who those players want to ever be. Oh my god. Even that guy continued to not like it. But God. We're coming up on the man of the hour, Tito Gordasi. The guy who's always liking your girlfriend's profile picture up there. Tito's dating a girl with, a, with mental issues 10 years younger than him because of course he is. You might recognize Tito from walking in between train cars during your commute. <laughs> or you wanting to ask him to turn his music down on the bus. <laughs> or him driving the bus. <laughs> Tito looks straight for 40. Black don't crack, but Puerto Ricans do sell that to teenagers. <laughs> Yeah. Right, we should get this going. Tito's got to force a friend of a friend to listen to his mixtape later, so <laughs> I do want to get this going. Uh, yeah, I mean, real quick, though, uh, Tito, very unique guy. I love him dearly. You know, when I started this stupid roast battle thing here, no one was buying tickets, obviously, and we had trouble getting people to do the show, and every comic had, like, an excuse that they didn't want to do it. Uh, and Tito never had that excuse. He would always fucking come and do it, and mostly that's because nobody else would book him, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, mostly. But <laughs> Tito never had excuses, man. He's down to do it, and, you know, um, I'm just really grateful that I met somebody that's so fucking unique and is, like, doing a bunch of cool shit and is really different than the hordes of comics here, like me and the rest of these degenerates. <laughs> They're just floating on the river of PBR that is Chicago comedy. <laughs> and he's, like, so different and unique and I'm really thankful to have met him and, and for him to uh, have been such an uh, integral part of, of fucking my career doing this bullshit and I love him dearly. Right. Right the man of the hour and all, one hour is all he has because that's what his ankle monitor is going off. Give it up for Tino! I don't deserve any of this, honestly. This is uh, this is amazing. I can't believe you guys all came out here. This is uh, it's touching my soul, and I got all my friends here. Uh, well, some of them uh, that I like. <laughs> uh, guys are assholes. I got I really got a piece, so I'm gonna make this quick. <laughs> uh, hell yeah! Thank you, Chris Greco. Give it up for Chris fucking Greco. <laughs> God damn it, Chris, he's 100% Italian, but those eyebrows are Egyptian. Uh, <laughs> he's a real yo gabba gabba ghoul, apparently. <laughs> you look like a retarded Colin Farrell, dude. <laughs> I, he always wears a fucking sweater. I asked him put, to put on a suit coat, now you look like your dick should be in a box. I, <laughs> fucking, God damn, oversized 12 year old, Jesus. <laughs> Look like you got that shit at Burlington Coal Factory, bitch. Uh, oh yeah, this is awesome. Who else? Bob Keen, everybody! He's here because I really like Ariel. Uh, it's like a two for one package because she's Jewish and they love deals. Uh, God, bro, I, uh, a little bit of advice, Bob. Please stop telling uh, people that you've been a 12-year open micer. It's not a flex. Not. A real flex is smiling with a full set of teeth, Bob. It's really... <laughs> Dude, your smile looks haunted, bro. What the fuck? Should have burned some Palo Santo. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Miss Brown. Give it up for me. Amazing. Miss Brown, you look like a Dominican fuck Richard Simmons. I swear to God. <laughs> you make having AIDS look fun. I don't know why. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man, you look like you get your fashion tips from a Christmas tree. That's crazy. <laughs> the only way to turn them on is to touch the star, but if it's at the bottom, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> A real poppy culo over here. <laughs> Gay as fuck, we get it. <laughs> you look like the clown Pennywise, you know? 
Uh, well, I don't know if you look like Pennywise, but I have been calling you it for years. <laughs> Stop hiding under my bed, bitch! <laughs> Hell yeah. Ariel Julie, everybody! Did she fucking murder? Fucking murder! Hell yeah. Ariel, you're confusing because you got a uh, resting grandmother face. That's crazy. <laughs> You look like an elderly lady hiding in a 14-year-old. <laughs> 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 fucking Raggedy Ann Frank looking bitch. <laughs> 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 Damn! <laughs> look like slapping a squirrel, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of like all the Animaniacs because you're a yakko that married a wacko and you're the size of a dot. <laughs> That's a quote. <laughs> Oh, Hell yeah, we flexed it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's see, who else? Jessica Martinez! <laughs> or as the rest of the day is called, who? <laughs> she was there when I started comedy and I was jealous of her because she would always be booked for stand-up shows and now we're all here celebrating me. <laughs> How's improv going? <laughs> I'm doing improv now. It's going so good. <laughs> you know, not only that, the reason you're here is also because I needed a little diversity. You know, it was a real Latino and a they Mexican. <laughs> Hell yeah, you cute ass hedgehog. Let's go. <laughs> For years, I was calling her Jess Martinez. Before that, I called her Dora the Ford Explorer. <laughs> you got babysitter vibes, bitch. All right. Fucking <laughs> oh, go. Hell yeah. Kevin Kellum is here. Why, fuck it? <laughs> Kevin, you fucking 42-year-old, you work at Q101 and you follow wrestling. What is this, 1998? Get the fuck out of here, dude. You're a fucking toddler that just is surrounded by filth. This guy had to be taught how to wash his bedroom. I live with him. This is all true. I love you, Kevin. Thank you for all that. Hell yeah, you're wearing your funeral's best. All right. Did <laughs> you say goodbye to your grandmother in that clothes? All right. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Mike Knight, everybody! <laughs> Grown ass Tootsie Roll looking motherfucker. <laughs> Shouldn't you be escaping Madagascar, though? <laughs> <laughs> How you so light skinned, but your last name, Knight? That shit don't make no sense. <laughs> Yo, blackness and that K are silent, apparently. <laughs> Bro, you're a walking black and mild. That's ironic. <laughs> you got what I call Chester Cheeto vibes. <laughs> All right, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Hell yeah, Joe fucking kill Gallon. Joe fucking. You hot-headed, red-headed son of a park district man. <laughs> I love Joe. Joe's a very successful cop. He's the only one out of all of us that are making money out of this game. It's crazy. And I went to high school with him, but I didn't know him then as Joe Kilgallen. I knew him then as, how the fuck you get in my house, bitch? <laughs> what the fuck you doing in my house? Corky ass, dumb ass, fall down the stairs, bitch. And he did. He fell down the stairs in his head. <laughs> Oh, Joe, so, you're a handsome fellow, bro. You look like the guy from the show Billions if it was called Hundreds. <laughs> you gotta hear Joe's my favorite. You ever have a conversation, you gotta watch out because all he does is drop names, bro. He's just a big ass name dropper. We get it. Your friends have careers. That's crazy. It's crazy. What time soccer practice tomorrow? Anyways, <laughs> how ironic is it he started a show co uh, called Comedians You Should Know? Uh, <laughs> now he's here doing this. Cool job. Good job, Joe. Good job. Good job. And uh, 
Brandon fucking Keith for everybody. Brandon fucking Keith for everybody. <laughs> We've had our battles. I've won both times. It's great. <laughs> Kiefer, you look like someone threw Mama off the train. <laughs> 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 Motherfucker, you look infested. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you know he's southern when he opens his mouth, not by his accent, but his teeth are rusty. <laughs> you fucking grand wizard man lizard. <laughs> Keeper looks like a gargoyle perched on top of a liquor store. <laughs> He's actually giving up drinking. He gave up liquor except for being a boot liquor. <laughs> Save the blue bitch ass over here. Hell yeah, cocaine build a bear look him up. <laughs> <laughs> you look like what they call a Leonard skin tag, actually. Fucking <laughs> Craig Williams and shit. All right. <laughs> Who else? Did I get everybody? Did I get everybody? Yeah, just a problem. Hell yeah. Thank you guys all for being here, by the way. I don't deserve this amount of love since we got a pen. Thank you. We love you back, Lion. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, uh, I just want to thank you all for, for taking a little slice of your life to share mine. It's been a crazy four years. I, didn't, uh, I was born on Friday the, uh, Friday the 13th, in July, obviously, of 84, on a full moon, and I was born uh, not breathing. I had an umbilical cord wrapped around my throat, and uh, I was able to survive that. And uh, now I look like this. <laughs> you know, I should have probably gone that day. <laughs> you know what's ironic is that Michael Jackson's Thriller was the number one album, which fucking makes sense. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I really, I, uh, I'm in debt of gratitude for, our, for the Rose Battle team, for Chris, uh, for Tevin, for Stephanie. For Michael for taking pictures, for the Lincoln Lodge for having us, for allowing us to celebrate life as it's meant to be, with making fun of each other in good faith. And uh, I love you all. I really have to pee. Talk to me at the bar. Thank you all very much. You're very funny. And so happy to be here. Give it up for your host, Chris Quico! Gay. <laughs> that was amazing, Theo. That was so, what a great fucking closing out set from Brandon Kiefer. <laughs> one more time for Tito, everybody. <laughs> one more time for pals: Bob King, Vince Brown, Ariel, Julie, Joe Kilgow. Yes, it's Martinez, Mike Knight, Cameron Kellogg, I'm Chris Rico. Have a good rest of your night. Happy birthday, Tito.